Okay. Hi, my name is Kaylee Spivey and I'm a student at North Atlanta High School. For my capstone project, I have looked into self-segregation within my school and named it previously separate but equal, now together but separate. So I want you to imagine a situation in which you're a freshman in high school again. It's lunchtime and you're standing at the doors of the cafeteria and you're looking for your friends and in general your surroundings. Now you look to your left and you notice all of the tan tables are filled with black students. While there might be a white student here or there, maybe a Hispanic student, it's majority black. Now you look to your right and you notice that on this side it's Hispanic and white students. However, a closer look tells you that they're separated by table and never sit together. Now you look in front of you and you notice a group of girls three black girls and three white girls. You're surprised by this change in your cafeteria, but you notice that the three black girls reside on one side and the three white girls on the other. Oh no. Now... The image I just presented for you, not this one here, but the one I just allowed you to show in your mind, was a standard image of my cafeteria. This is a similar image, as you can see, the white students at one table and the black students at another. This is the phenomenon of self-segregation, in which one person will separate themselves purposefully because will separate themselves purposely in social situations based on race. When I began this project, I had assumed that this was a problem. I had thought this was because people would take this on into the future and continue separating themselves along with not being able to experience different cultures and backgrounds. Some of the students that I interviewed also shared this thought, saying things such as the stereotype would keep going on that integration would not occur, along with division would get wider as the years went on. However, as I proceeded through my empathy interviews, I noticed that some people thought it could be a solution as well. Now, in lab, we have used the design process to do our capstone projects. The first step of the design process was empathize, in which you do empathy interviews where you are trying to find a solution to your problem. Now, since I found that this was not necessarily a problem, this had gotten harder for me as I needed to realize what I was doing. But we're not going to get there yet. We're going to start with my interviews. So I interviewed six students and three teachers. All of them my past teachers or my current friends. In it I talked about self-segregation. These are the students I interviewed. I noticed many things in what they said that I hadn't previously thought of when I had started my project. And they were all very interesting because it was my friends that I had never thought of this, that they had never thought of this topic before. So the trends within the students that I noticed were, the, were all of these trends. However, the important ones were there are about three important ones. While everyone participated in self-segregation, which is what I asked in the interviews, some of them did it consciously and some of them unconsciously. 
What I noticed was the students who did it consciously were the black students. They had said that they did it because that was what they were used to and it was their comfort zone. Another thing I noticed was that in the students I interviewed, the three black, cho the three black students were gifted and two of the white students were standard and one gifted. Now with gifted program, it is majority white. And with the standard program, it's majority Hispanic and black, at least in my school. So you might think that there would be a difference in who they chose to be friends with based on the fact that their surroundings were mainly one race or the other. But in fact, that did not happen. With the gifted black students, even though they were surrounded by majority white students in their classrooms, they still said their three best friends were black. In the, in the standard white students, in classes with majority Hispanic or black students, they still said their three best friends are white. I found this very interesting as you would think that being surrounded by that would affect who they surrounded themselves with. Now these are the teachers I interviewed. They're all my teachers from ninth grade, my dance teacher, my AP human geography teacher, and my PE and health teacher. And they were all passionate about this. My dance teacher said that she felt it was a problem because, but she also felt it could be a solution. And she, in her classroom, would tackle this by choosing some groups and not choosing others. And she would notice that when she didn't choose them, people would choose to segregate themselves with their own race. And when she did, she would try to mix the groups. Miss Brookins also did a similar thing in which she would, when we had group assignments, she would mix the groups and try to mix them based on race. But she did notice that while in her previous years, people wouldn't self-segregate as much, this year, a lot of her students would self-segregate and she would have to separate them because, not because she thought it was a bad thing, just because she um, needed to. Coach Sardin also noticed this and he would also pick or not pick in presentations. I had a project with my, I had two projects in that class, one with my friends, who happened to be my white friends, and then he picked a group for me and it was not with only my white friends. Now throughout this, we have to find a prototype for us to find a solution. Now because this is not necessarily an issue, I found that difficult to do. My prototype ideas at the beginning were a Medium article, which is what we have used for photography throughout the semester, a TED talk, a short five minute video, or a documentary. Now, I was very stubborn and intent on doing a documentary for a long time until I realized that there are many things surrounding students that you can't film, such as racial issues. And this is one that people don't like to talk about, which is something I also noticed. So I realized that because this might be an uncomfortable topic, maybe it shouldn't be a discussion or something that they have to read because they might not want to read it. So, my idea is to make a TED Talk of five minute video and present it in our advisory classes, which occur every other week on a Tuesday. What I would want to do is talk about self-segregation and bring awareness to it because so many people like to choose to ignore it or don't notice it at all. Um,
I researched many different articles about this topic and the most important one I found was about the book Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria? Now, the author talks about how people commonly will assume self-segregation is an issue and not necessarily a solution. And that was one of the first times that I realized that this wasn't necessarily a problem. She talked about how minority groups could actually benefit from their own safe spaces if they were to self-segregate rather than just be like <laughs> uh, I don't know, rather than be mm, def defected or, yeah, affected negatively by this thing. Um, in the end, I have realized that this is not a problem, but something we need to bring awareness to, and something that we should talk about more than keep hidden because it is important in our society. Question time. I mean, you can go first. Okay, you mentioned that it's not like really a problem with self segregation. When you were interviewing the students or the teachers, did you, um, uh, did they tell you that they thought that because they did self segregate, that did not allow them to know more about other cultures and that prevent them from being open to embracing others? You said because they did self segregate. So, you mentioned, you know, that it's not a problem, mm -hmm. but did anyone share with you that because they did self-segregate, then they didn't know as much about other cultures, or that prevented them from being open to embracing the differences? Well, my AP Human Geography teacher did say that she chose to, in teacher meetings, she would choose to sit with different people just so she could get a different understanding of things. So I thought that was very interesting because most people would do that just because they choose to stay with what they know instead of doing that, which is also another thing that brings this about. So, so in your experience at Lab Atlanta, you've not really had a chance to self-segregate. So as you present this topic, how would you articulate the benefits of, of not self-segregating and getting to know other cultures? Well, in one of the articles I read, it said that when people integrate, they normally do better in school, in their job, and are healthier in general, just because they know more about different things. So they'll be more educated as to what they need to do, so. What makes people that are minorities feel safe in a group of only their own race? Well, what my friend said was because she was used to it, she felt it was normal and a safe space for her. So she could comfortably talk about what she wanted to and people would understand what she was talking about. Would it be possible to, you talked about prototyping mm -hmm. during the TED Talk, would it be possible to do, after you've done your TED Talks and advisement <clears throat> and had that portion of your presentation pushed out, is it possible to do a social experiment inside that same cafeteria where you kind of actually force different cultures to sit with each other and see how that would come off, and maybe for a set time period. Well, the problem with that is 
this is not something that you should force on anybody because that'll just make them not want to do it even more. And because it can be a safe space for people, they might feel alienated or somehow like they have done something wrong. So that would, I don't think, be a good idea.